Hello, this is Christina Wallace and today I'm going to show you how to make an amazing uh, medium-sized photographic background for still life. Uh, it's very quick, uh, very cheap to make and also, check this out, it requires no nails whatsoever. So, uh, without further ado, let's get to it. For someone who spends a great deal of time trying to take pretty pictures of the flowers that I make, I have been in a desperate need of a nice photographic backdrop for ages and I have always been really, really afraid of nails. So when I seen this kit, which you kind of just slot in together, I thought I was onto a winner there. So I tried to slot them together and it didn't really work because the backdrop would just kind of fall apart. So anyway, I've decided to get glue. So this is the evening by the time I got the glue and all the rest of it. Um, I found myself in needing to cover the floor. So that's a must. Really, really do cover the floor. Now the glue. The glue is not toxic, but it does set quite quickly. And as you will see later, it does need to be applied quite carefully. So use a brush. You could just wash it off later. It doesn't stink, by the way, either. So and with this brush, apply this glue as carefully as possible. And if you do have an excess of glue, do wipe it really, really thoroughly with um, with some kind of a wet cloth. It's as I said, it it's not oil based, so it can be wiped uh, or else if you have a little bit left over you might need to sand it later so um, it's up to if you have a bit of sanding paper that's okay too and you know I'm pleased to say that this whole uh, job of putting gluing these planks together was the mm, longest and the fiddliest bit of the whole process it took me about 30-40 minutes so you know I could live with that out of the whole big job uh, and um, I guess uh, when I'm making my second backdrop uh, it's going to take me a lot less I'm actually gonna gonna time it also, in case you're wondering why I'm putting all these weird things on top of my wood, I'm just trying to get it dry, safe, um, I mean, straightly. And as to this sponge, I'm using it because nothing is going to come off it as I'm applying it. It's just an equivalent of a lint -free, uh, free cloth and it's a lot cheaper, that's why. And the colour, I've chosen it because it's... Um, kind of reminded me of a pretty pictures on Instagram that I've seen and I look at Instagram a lot so but there are loads of different shades and you could obviously choose the one that you prefer and this is uh, the end result let's get to see how I got there. so this is me at three o'clock in the morning trying to do my first layer after spending about three or four hours trying to change my banner on a YouTube, which was supposed to be a bit of a doddle, but yeah, it turned out to be a bit of a minefield. You can go and have a look at my new banner on YouTube if you want to now. And the first layer, it was a nice surprise. It took me a few minutes and it was so much easier than I anticipated. The idea here is to really just to blend the seams together and work reasonably quick but the uh, mix itself is nice and smooth and it doesn't stink it's not toxic presumably not particularly toxic anyway and uh, there are so so many different colors that you could use and uh, it can, is it a long job or a short job I don't know after the initial um, stop where you have to uh, do the whole thing gluing it together uh, the layering is actually very easy and then depending on how many layers you do you know drying time is about an hour in between the layers so yeah it could be a long short job really <laughs> so what else uh, obviously you know uh, close all the bits when you're not using them and this is the brush I washed it could be good enough good to go could be reused so all the more reasons to use it in the first place really so these are the bits uh, of dried glue which I've decided to uh, sand off with a sandpaper again you probably uh, don't have to do it it just depends what uh, you see your final result as being less casual, more casual, whatever. And you might need to retouch the gaps in between as well, again, depending on the look that you um, are aspiring to. And here I'm retouching the bits that I've just sanded, and then I'm just going to leave them for about 20 minutes. 
and you know business as usual so while I'm applying the lace I'm going to put some music on because it's quite self-explanatory but interesting to see I hope and then I'm going to show you what I did how I set up a quick setup with a ready background Okay, so this is a quick demo of the actual ready wardrobe. I'm not a morning person, me, but anyway. So it's about just under meter by meter. It's actually quite light. It's a bit, a bit shaky, but um, uh, perfectly sturdy. Just quite thin, really, and it's quite light. And it's double sided, so you could do all those wonderful things on the other side. And now a couple of shots taken with this background. This is a classic Instagramish picture head on, so focused with SLR camera. I left the details at the bottom in the description. And this is another one with the same camera. You probably could do something like this with iPhone anyway, adding a bit of filter. And this is just to show that there's nothing wrong with the backdrop itself. That's just how the lens worked out. And another trend with a lot of background, so that also is an option. And this is how I shot it, just in a corner of my bedroom with some curtains going. And so with this, I am about to wrap it up with this tutorial and I just want to add one more thing. I've really enjoyed making this backdrop and I am definitely going to make few more varieties as I really need them and I'm going to post them on my channel. So whatever it is you photograph for yourself or your social media, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the further videos of the same sort. And with that, have a lovely end of the week and the weekend. This is Christina Wallace and I see you again next week.